Welcome to our Faith, Hope, and Love television ministry. We are broadcasting from our worship campus located here in the city of Memphis, Tennessee. We are the church where family comes together and everything begins with, it is finished. Now please receive our senior pastor and host, Pastor Jeff Galmore. Praise the Lord. Good morning to you, FCC, our online faith family, and to all of you who are watching from wherever you might be watching from. Good morning to you and welcome to church. We sincerely pray that you're prospering and in good health, even as your soul prospers. Listen, today is the fourth Sunday of June, and so we're officially at the end of the first half of the year. And for our FCC, uh, listen, we've had a tremendous first half of 2023. Of course, FCC, I want to thank everyone, especially all of our elders and everybody who came out to Shelby Farms as we ministered at the Agape Faith and Family Festival this weekend. Uh, God has blessed us with an opportunity to share his good news with a broad audience, and we thank God for the success we were able to have on yesterday. Thank you again for believing as we continue to do the work of God's kingdom here in the city of Memphis. And of course, last week, we also concluded our series called Our State of Being. Uh, we finished with a message entitled Confederacy. If you missed a message, I want to encourage you to please go and watch the replay. It is available for your review on our channel. Today, as we close out the first half of this year, we're talking about the Apostles Doctrine and how the early church continued in the Apostles Doctrine. I believe this message is going to be a blessing to you. I want to ask you to grab a pencil and a notepad, take good notes. We're going to go into our live service. I look forward to seeing you at the end of the broadcast. Amen. Thank you, TJ and Dre. If y'all would mind holding up your Bible or devices and say, Father, thank you that I have ears to hear what the word of God is saying to me right now. Amen. Here. And today for a few minutes, I want to talk about the apostles doctrine, the apostles doctrine. Um, we just finished up our series on state of being and last week's message, Confederacy. If you, if you haven't heard that message, I want to encourage you to go to YouTube and watch the replay. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, you don't have to turn there just yet. Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 9 says that there is nothing new under the sun. Uh, I want us to receive that for just a moment. The, the scriptures state that there is nothing new under the sun. With that understood, Brother James, with that understood, the Bible teaches that we should find successful patterns within the kingdom of God and copy them. We should find successful patterns within the kingdom and copy them. The fastest way to learn is to submit to someone who has already accomplished what you desire to accomplish. Want us to receive that? The fastest way to learn is to find someone who's already accomplished what you desire and copy them. That's what the scriptures teach. All right, on the screen is a picture of one of my generals and one of my mentors that I really respect and admire. His, his name was Apostle Frederick Casey Price. Uh, Dr. Price went home to be with Jesus in 2021. And uh, that's a photo of me with his son, Fred Price Jr. And that's me in California at their church. I'm showing you this for a reason, not to show off that I know them, but I sought them out. I took a flight to L.A. just to go to that church. Just to go sit under the apostles' feet. I'm, I'm really trying to, you know, today's message is not going to be long, but I'm, I'm dropping some heavyweight wisdom today. Find you people that you believe in and sit at their feet. Tie ladies in this room. Find you some women that you can look up to and sit at their feet. Amen? Now listen, Dr. Price is gone to be with Jesus. But this man left a treasure trove of wisdom here in the earth. He's got countless numbers of books that he's written 
where we can take from his wisdom even though he's, his works follow after him. So his works are still here in the earth. They're still here in the earth. Dr. Miles Monroe is another one that I, that I highly esteem. When I heard that he was coming anywhere near Memphis, I made sure I was there so that I could receive from Dr. Miles Monroe. Dr. Bill Weston is another one. If I hear that he's coming to town, I'm going to be in attendance. I'm going to be in attendance. Find you, find you patterns that you can emulate, that you can copy. Amen. We receive. Dr. Robert Morris, here's somebody who's alive right now. This is one of the best Bible teachers on the earth right now. His style of teaching is, is second to none. And uh, he's, he's really accurate. I just, I love his anointing and his ministry. Uh, Robert Morris is another one. So find you good patterns to copy. All right. Now, it's good to find us men and women that we can follow, that we can copy. But the greatest pattern you can find is Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Open up your Bible and read the Word of God. And I'm very sincere about that. Don't just lean on the preacher to do it for you. Open up your Word and let the Holy Spirit talk to you. Amen. We receive that? Y'all heard that from your pastor. Open up the Bible and study your Word. And that's, that's not just for preachers. That's for everybody in this room. Open up the Bible. This is a picture from my library. This is just a little small snippet. I tried to count them. I have, I have somewhere close to a hundred different Bibles. Again, I'm not telling you that to impress you. I'm telling you that to show you that that's where my passion is. That's where my hunger is. So when I see a Bible, I'm like, I want to see what that particular Bible has to say. I got all kind of study Bibles, all kind of different Bibles, because I value the Word of God that much. That much. So, so find you people you can follow, but, but open the Bible for yourself and sit at the feet of Jesus. Amen? Now, in 2023, we've had a lot of success so far during the first half of this year. This is the last Sunday of June, and we will officially step into the second half of 2023 next week. Okay? Now, in order to continue with the momentum we have, we must continue to follow what we've done to have success so far. Miss Alicia, this, just, this is just what happens. Uh, a lot of people will get started and they'll get off to a good foot on a job or wherever the case may be. And then you just give them about six months or so, and they <laughs> you, you know I'm telling the truth, and they're slacking. And they're not doing the same anymore. They're not doing the same. When they first came to the job, they was excited about the job. And they came to work on time, and they had their clothes pressed and ready to go, and they were doing a good job. And then you give them about six months, and they're late, and they're not on time, they're not prompt anymore, they're not... They're not in love with it. What happens? What happens that we lose that energy, Brother James? What, what happens that we lose it? That we lose it? What, what, what keeps us from keeping that same excellence all the way through? Y'all would turn to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Today's going to be a record. We'll be out of church by 1110. Acts chapter 2. This is, FCC, this is the early church. If y'all say the early church. This, this is right after Jesus has gotten up from the grave. He told his disciples, y'all go to this room, go to Jerusalem and wait until the Holy Spirit comes. Anybody familiar with that story? All right. This is right after the Holy Spirit has been poured out. And they, the early church is born in the earth and the people are on fire. They are on fire. Watch this. Let's read this together. This is verse 22. Acts 2, 22. It says, people of Israel, listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus, the Nazarene, by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him, as you well know. But God knew what would happen. In his prearranged plan, 
was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. With the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to a cross and killed him. But God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life, for death could not keep him in its grip. King David said this about him, I see the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad. My tongue shouts his praises. My body rests in hope. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. Watch this church, verse 29. Dear brothers, think about this. You can be sure that the patriarch David wasn't referring to himself. For he died and was buried and his tomb is still here among us. But he was a prophet and he knew God had promised him, promised with an oath that one of David's own descendants would sit on his throne. David was looking into the future and speaking of the Messiah's resurrection. He was saying that God would not leave him among the dead nor allow his body to rot in the grave. God raised Jesus from the dead and we're all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place of the highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. And the Father, he has prom uh, as he has promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us just as you see and hear today. Watch this church 34. For David himself never ascended into heaven, yet he said, The Lord said, Sit in the Lord said to my Lord, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies and make them a footstool under your feet. So let, let everyone in Israel know for certain that God made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Verse 37. Peter's words pierced the hearts, pierced their hearts. And they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins, turn to God, be baptized in the name of Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord your God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation, to those who believed, what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and prayer. Church, can you say amen? Thank God for the reading of the word. We see here in the early church, Miss Jerrica, Peter is preaching up a storm, and what we just read in the Bible is that the energy was so powerful until 3,000 people were saved in one day. In one day. The early church grew exponentially. It grew so fast because of the power of the preaching of the word. Now church, stay with me. Give me about seven minutes and we're done. I want you to see, today we're talking about the apostles' doctrine. But there's a particular thing I'm trying to extract out of this passage. First of all, let me say to you, what exactly is the apostles' doctrine? We just read in the scripture, it says, and they continued in the apostles' doctrine. Uh, I've, I've, I read commentaries from different people, like I just gave you an example of some of them on the screen. You can go read commentaries, and they're good, and, I, and, and I've read a bunch of them, and all of them give you a little something different when you ask, what is the apostles' doctrine? Well, I want to show you what the Holy Spirit showed me is the Apostles' Doctrine. I'm going to show you exactly what the Apostles' Doctrine is. Y'all look at verse 36 with me, please. Just You can look at the screen or look at it in your Bible. It says, so let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Church, you do me a favor, repeat after me. Say, let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Church, hear me. Here is the apostles' doctrine. The apostles preached Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's the apostles' doctrine. They preached that Jesus was and is the Messiah. Now, there are others tell you the apostles' doctrine was about baptism and this and that. Listen to me. Just, just be uh, uh, comprehensive with me for a minute. If Jesus hadn't died, there would be no need for baptism. The baptism is about Christ. 
There is no baptism outside of Christ. So the, so the doctrine is about Christ, nothing else. All that other stuff is just subsidiary of the ministry of Christ. It's a derivative of Christ. But Christ is the gospel. The apostles' doctrine, in, simple, in, in, in short, is Jesus Christ. He's the Messiah. He is the one that, would, that rose from the dead and now is seated at the right hand of the Father. The apostles preached Jesus and him crucified. That's what they preached. They preached the finished work of Christ. Is this real quick, church? At this church, what we preach is the finished work of Jesus Christ. The work is finished. It's finished in Christ. And if you want to go to a church where some things are happening and things are moving and things are shaking, go, don't go to a church. I'm saying this as a pastor. Don't go to a church where they're teaching you law, rules, and regulations, and all that stuff. You're in a dead church. Go to a church where they teach Jesus Christ. Amen. We receive that? Amen. Teach Jesus. I listen to preachers online or go to churches online, and I hear them talking about too much stuff other than Jesus Christ. I really don't want to hear you talk about a whole bunch of other stuff if you're not talking about Jesus. I don't have time. I got other things to do with my time than to just hear you talk about some nonsense. I need you to reveal Jesus to me. Show me Jesus. That's what I want you to preach to me. And that's what we preach at this church. The finished work of Christ. Amen. We receive? Now, I want us to see the message that I want to extract out of today's message. I don't, I don't really fo want to focus on the apostles' doctrine. I want to focus on this scripture. If you look at uh, Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. And we're going to look at it this time in the King James. In the King James. And it says, after Peter did all that preaching, V2, after he did all that and getting all the folks saved, and all of that happened, this is what the word says. And they continued. That's what I want us to take from here today. The people continued. Well, I tell you, I know we've had, a heavy, we've had a fun weekend. Yesterday we were out in that sun, getting baked by that sun. I know we've had a good weekend, but I feel the Holy Ghost in my spirit right now. They continued. They continued. I want to conclude my message today with this scripture. Pastor Sam, I want you to see this. Everybody in this room, I want you to see this. I want you to, I want you to share with your brothers and sisters. I want you to tell them to make sure they watch the replay. I want you to tell them to hear this word. Galatians chapter 5. Just look at the screen. Just look at the screen. Galatians 5. Paul went to the church of Galatia and this is what he said. He said, you were doing good. You were running so well. You were doing good. You were going to church. You were paying your tithes. You were winning. Who hindered you? Who hindered you from following the truth? Who stopped your progress? Ms. Alicia, who was it that, if, that infected you to where you don't come to work excited anymore? You no longer want to do a good job. You're careless now with your work just like everybody else when you were so excited at first. Who, who hindered you? You were excited about your relationship at first. Now you don't like them. Who hindered you? You were excited about your church. You were running well. What stopped you? Church, if we conclude today, TJ, if you all wouldn't mind. I don't care how good the church is. I don't care how good the word is. It's not going to profit you at all if you don't continue. If you don't continue, it's not going to benefit you at all. People today are so fickle. They're so inconsistent. People today have no endurance. They have no commitment. They have no longevity. 
They don't understand what covenant is. The anointing on my life in large part is because I'm telling you what I know. My former pastor, as I've told you, I'm telling you all this for a reason. Not to disperse him in any way. Bes besmirch him. Uh, he just was not the most healthiest. He wasn't the healthiest pastor in the world. He and his wife had a lot of flaws. A lot of flaws. They had a lot of flaws. His wife was known to be one of the biggest gossips. She stayed in the middle of mess. She just did. She stayed in the middle of mess. Pastor Cruz had his flaws. But he was called by God. And I knew he was called by God. And watch this. I continued. I continued. Brother James, I did that. I continued. I continued all the way to the end until God told me that's enough. I continue. The word to the church today is to continue. To continue in the apostles' doctrine. Continue in what we teach here at Faith Community Church. Don't you dare sit up under this kind of anointing and the word that goes forth at this church and not let it prosper you. When we got proof all around us that God is at this house, that God is blessing people's socks off at Faith Community Church. Don't you be the one who is there. You're sitting, you're sitting here under this anointing and it's not profiting you because you don't continue. Amen. We receive. Praise the Lord, FCC. What a powerful word from God. Listen, I have two chapter sixes for you. Uh, Hebrews chapter six and verse 12 says, imitate those who through faith and patience inherited the promise. Galatians chapter six says, don't get weary in doing good. Listen, FCC, thank God for all he's done for us so far, but we'll only continue to have success if we continue. Amen. Thank God for his word. Have a blessed week in the Lord. There's a few words from our announcer. I look forward to seeing everybody next week. Thank you for watching our Faith, Hope, and Love television ministry. You can find all previous broadcasts on our YouTube channel by searching Faith Community Church Memphis. If you would like to donate a tax-deductible gift to our ministry, please visit our website at www.memphisfaith.com. Please join us next week for more family-centered teaching. Until then, on behalf of our pastor and the Faith Community Church family, have a great week, and please remember to keep walking by faith.